In completely inappropriate news today, we learned uh, that First Lady Melania Trump ordered the firing of a national security staffer and that that person has indeed been fired. Uh, Mira Ricardel has been the deputy national security advisor to the president working below national security advisor John Bolton since uh, May of this year, May of 2018. And recently, the first lady and Ricardel went to Africa. And it turns out that Ricardel was not getting along with Melania Trump's staff. One report says that the disagreements included where people were going to sit on the flight to Africa. Not exactly serious life altering stuff, but they weren't getting along. Ricardo also uh, previously was having some conflicts with Defense Secretary Jim Mattis. There have been reports of tension between Ricardo and potentially uh, soon to be fired chief of staff John Kelly. That's another story about the chaos in the White House. And then yesterday, reportedly catching the White House off guard, Melania Trump's office put out a statement saying that, quote, it is the position of the office of the first lady that Ricardo no longer deserves the honor of serving in this White House. And hours after that, we learned that indeed Mira Ricardo has been fired by Donald Trump. The first lady publicly slammed a national security staffer and reports are that neither Trump nor chief of staff John Kelly nor press secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders knew that the statement was going to be put out. They were caught off guard and indeed that staffer has now been fired. The first lady's office is making decisions about who handles national security in the United States of America. If you are national security advisor John Bolton, Pat, and one of your staffers has been fired because the first lady didn't like her, what do you do now? What is John Bolton going to do about the fact that the first lady is making staffing decisions for him? This is a new level of ridiculousness and absurdity, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, because I think uh, if you look at American history, first ladies have had different levels of influence. Hillary Clinton, for example, uh, was in charge of pioneering uh, and championing universal health care and the Violence Against Women at Women's Act. And I know that Melania oh, oh boy. Has, has played a, um, a secondary role, like she's playing you know, a backseat position here in the White House. She hasn't been that vocal and active in forming policy. But if she wants to get a particular staffer fired, particularly one who hasn't been Senate confirmed, I think it's fair game. That's my take on it. This is not Melania being best, as she likes to say. And just consider for a second. OK, so Hillary tried to do health care in the 90s. Fine. If it had leaked that Michelle Obama privately influenced the firing of even a speechwriter to Barack Obama, Fox News and Rush Limbaugh would have been covering it wall to wall every single day for months. This was a public statement about a national security staffer, the second in command to John Bolton by the first lady. This is actually an important job related to national security. And we're barely hearing a word about it from the right wing media that they, they are pathetic hypocrites. And you can say, Pat, that Hillary Clinton was involved in trying to do health care. OK, that's one thing. But Hillary Clinton was not at least in this way, deciding through public statements who gets fired by the president of the United States. If your argument is, well, listen, David, this stuff is going on behind the scenes either way. This is just the, the White House, um, uh, the, the uh, first lady's office, rather making a public statement about it. It doesn't change the fact that this is actually happening behind the scenes all the time. OK, well, we can look at that argument and then we can debate it on its merits. But the idea that Melania Trump knows anything about who should be in a position of ensuring the national security of the United States is unquestionably unfounded. I mean, we can't defend that. Can we, Pat? Do you see any difference between a national security uh, staffer, someone who is not Senate confirmed, and say someone who is in a cabinet position, like a secretary of state? Like, can you can you make a difference between the two of those things? There is a difference. But either way, Melania Trump is not qualified to decide who is the number two national security person in the United States. Yes, she's not saying fire the secretary of state. That would be different. But this is still plenty bad. I feel like there are maybe a thousand things that we can criticize going on in the Trump administration right now. And for me, this just doesn't rank that highly on the list. Uh, in regards to that 
right wing media point that you made. I think that they're just way too busy covering the caravan, covering the midterm election recounts. There, there's a lot of stuff going on right now to fear monger about. Well, we've now got a thousand and one things on that list, and this is certainly one of them. I, I got one email which said, hey, David, there's no way that Melania did this without approval. This is clearly a plot to distract from something else, maybe upcoming indictments from Mueller. Well, it did leak that supposedly Mueller indictments are coming soon, but this is uh, a little too well orchestrated for it to be a calculated distraction. I, I don't even give them that much credit. Send me your thoughts. Are you more on the Pat side of the Melania dictating who is in charge of national security of the United States? Or are you more on my side of this? Or is there some other position we haven't considered? The show is on Twitter at David Pakman show. I am on Twitter at D Pakman. Follow us and let me know your thoughts. Today's program brought to you in part by Blinkist dot com slash Pacman. Blinkist is a great service that I use all the time. What they do is they take thousands of the most popular nonfiction books, including the newest bestsellers. They condense them into 15 minute audio books that you can listen to and you still get the most crucial information and insights from each book. And I've listened to a ton of books on Blinkist. I recently checked out Soccernomics by Simon Cooper. We do have, after all, the World Cup going on recently. We also have been talking about BS Jobs and there is a great new book, BS Jobs by David Graeber which I listen to on Blinkist. They're constantly adding new books to the platform. You will never run out of fascinating and critically acclaimed books to enjoy. And our audience can get a seven day free trial by going to Blinkist.com slash Pacman. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm putting a link in the video description. And after the free trial, if you like it, you can continue enjoying thousands of condensed audiobooks for about five bucks a month. That's B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T dot com forward slash P-A-K-M-A-N.